Schrodinger's cat, versus, Einstein's, or my dog. There was a huge battle for the future of subatomic particle research direction in 1931 at the Solvay Conference. To simplify, I will separate the choices into three camps. Einstein's methods included using time and space as warped. Schrodinger's method was a calculation based upon the world as probabilistic, and based upon particles and their fields. Heisenberg's method was a calculation based upon the world as probabilistic, based upon only fields. Yet, all three of these methods we total separation from classical, Newtonian physics. Newtonian physics was a method applied that each force is associate with a particle, a physical particle at one position. As of that time, Newtonian physics did not describe certain subatomic behaviors. Each of these described a method of generate results based upon a new unit of energy, Planck's constant. It was very small units not applicable to anything larger than an atom or particle. Yet, the evidence that forces and energy come only in this tiny units was overwhelming. Something needed to revise to address this evidence. My approach to physics here is different than all three. It is Newtonian. It is based upon the misunderstanding of all three approaches about time relative to the subatomic world. By the way, Heisenberg won. This century in physics follows his path. My life's work is an alternative, starting with defining time so the quantization of energy flows from a continuous Newtonian physical concept. Time is a linear constant dimension. Its pace is real, just like the other three physical dimensions. Now, that it might not always seem that way. But, my idea is that time is really about the number of events we measure. A huge number of events prefers statistical methods. A few events prefers the Newtonian. So, the path from a continuous source to a quantized result is based upon both the measurement accuracy and the time segment accuracy. The number of activities, or options, make results statistical, but that does not mean that the underlying physical reality is physical. That time waiting for the job offer seems warped, dragging on forever. Yet, time still is a constant that we cannot change. We must wait for the notice, or that person to text us back. The challenge here is that perception and measurement versus the activity. In the case, of waiting, there are no intermediate events, so all the time gets focused on the one event. Time seems to warp towards forever. That is what I think is happening in the current quantum models. They are focusing on only one event, yet in that time, there are thousands or millions of events. That same time when you are busy flies by because of the purposeful series of activities. Now, let's focus on the time based upon as example we all know. Dog years. For dogs, an entire lifetime gets packed into 10 years, when humans live for 80. In the case of our dog, Henry, his life moves, at times, slower and faster. Get him on the trails, and the activity is frenetic. Hours at home, most of the time is sitting on that dog bed or barking at passing vehicles. A day for the dog is millions of seconds. If I measure any second, even those results are not quite math continuous. If I measure once every day, the results will have discontinuities, but ones that I might predict well. The challenge with Einstein, Schrödinger, and Heisenberg, is that they did not calculate the relative scale of the activity to the measurement. So, Sonia and Henry take a hike almost every day. I will think of them as Sonia particle and Henry particle. They are physical entities that we measure in certain time segments. We measure the distance from home, a 1D unit. In this measurement system, Henry particle is most of the time within 10 meters of our home. Yet, at a consistent time, particle Henry moves away the house and returns. I have presented that as a series of measurements, every few seconds, over a few hours. In general, that graph looks continuous. Henry does not jump to Jupiter between any two step. However, the distance measurements do have a units, and Henry will move up the scale only in those units. To say, that Henry is a probability within two units is not physical reality. 
that is a measurement unit issue. If you cannot measure less than one unit does not mean that the dog only sum is one meter dimensions that are a probability. Hopefully, that gives a first look at my renaissance of Newton physics. Further, if you look at the first 100 periods, those are different measurement. The dog is running over the window to bark, and back to the food bowl. However, these events occur within a very, very small range. The larger graph on the previous page made those seem like a continuous line near zero. So, there is movement even in those periods. There is a restricting barrier, the walls of the house. Sonia might go out alone, but for hours, and millions of measurements, Henry is restricted to that 5 meters from within a smaller range. But, we have a limit of 1 for measurement. Again, the dog, Henry, is not a probability. So, most importantly, this graph now seems discontinuous, the positions jumps based upon a, time segment of measurements and b, the efficiency of the measuring tool. A dog is a whole thing, not a probability. However, I can measure if Henry is inside the house, and I get a very accurate ratio. That probability over time works, but Henry at any one point is either in the house or not. However, I do another calculation, called the proximity to Sonia Calc, and I find that at almost all times when outside the house, Henry is within 5 meters of Sonia. I have lots of ratios that are true as probability distributions, but Henry is still whole particle at every moment. In every case, the physical entity gets observed by unit measurements, often with excellent statistics. However, Henry is still Henry. Next, I will review how the same physical model of subatomic physics can give results in units, but still be a continuous physical entity. The basic unit of subatomic physics is Planck's constant. Yet, what is that? To me, that is the energy or force or field difference between the pole and the equator for a static magnetic dual pole, my revision of Dirac's magnetic monopole concept. In this way, I keep all of Dirac's great work, but get the benefit of a viable physical model. A monopole would be unbalanced with the energy displacing the particle in a preferred direction. However, my duopole has the forces as repulsive in both hemispheres, at 180 degrees from both poles, so those fields and forces exactly balance. It is very Newtonian, the third law, equal and opposite reaction. With that model, the static then become a changing A, force and B, field as it rotates. Further, that means that we get results with particles that have one Planck unit of field change either rotating up or rotating down. However, we can only measure spin when it changes from up to. To measure the physical spin, which I postulate as a 3D engineering that become physics spin, of the particle duopoly measured, it must pass 90 degrees. Then it is down, not up. The middle example is a rotation that has changed, but still measures as up. In this way, the particle is a full physical entity, but every measurement is only in units of one hemisphere of rotation field change. In this way, we get energy, in the same way, as pulses. We get frequency times Planck equals the amps. That is the like the number rate of of pumps of a bicycle pedal becomes linear movement of the bicycle. Again, this is limit of the energy based upon the physical model of subatomic particles. The particle is still a whole, but it delivers a clear unit, a maximum, in any event, including in a measurement. Further, this gives a physical reason for the reduced Planck constant. That is Planck divided by 2 pi. I also explains the 720 degree cycle in current quantum equations. A physical 360 degree rotation will observe the pole twice so might seem like 2 times 360. Like the dog chasing its tail, certain activities will not measure, but still the dog and the whole particle are physical entities. The work is not done. A physical logic only explains the measurement challenge. We have a 3D engineering model. However, 
the time segment is also a reason for thinking that the world is statistical. If we can measure each rotation, then the results would have become more obvious in the last century. However, science equipment is not even close to measuring even a simple rotation relative to the fields. Remember that any field, like the energy from a photon passing, can change the particle spin, and thereby the reaction or measurement. What is that time segment to observe a subatomic particle? Well, it is tiny. The radius of a particle is 10 to the minus 15 meters wide. However, the speed of light is 10 to the plus 8 meters per second. So, flipping that as seconds per meter, that is 10 to the minus 9. As a result, one event that might change it for a particle happens every 10 to the minus 23 seconds. Well, 10 to the minus 22 seconds if you need that 2 times pi. That is a tiny time segment. No equipment can measure that fast. Think about it. In nanoseconds, that is 0.000000000000001 seconds. A point with 13 zeros. My dog has run to the window a billion times, so the results would seem statistical. That is like measuring every 54,000 particle years. My dog would have barked and slept and gone on hikes and at that measurement distance, I would not know if Henry even existed. Ah, so there we have it. The Schrodinger cat analogy is wrong, yet correct. If I only measure Henry every 54,000 years, he might be dead or live. We don't know if the cat or dog got enough food. The example has simplified a lifetime into one event. That is not reality. The reality is the particle is an entity, and the challenges are in A, understanding the measurement unit, the 3D duopoly rotation of a Planck constant energy from pole to equator, and B, understanding that the equipment are measuring only the results of millions of possible events that might cause it. In fact, that time of 10 to the minus 22 seconds is justified by the limits of extensive lab work. In the above, the activities of the most powerful microscopes, are always limited at that same 10 to the minus 22 seconds. The activity cannot occur at less than that. The field must change the entire particle. A pull half one way, and half the other, would generate no overall results. The unit is only the whole duopole structure which has physical dimensions. The fields can only operate at the speed of light for that whole duopole structure. So, the limits of measurement are physical limits. The science will not get shorter time observation. The Planck unit has physical meaning. It is a meaning both in the unit of energy, but also as the unit of time. Still, that unit of time makes the results of Schrodinger perfectly valid. Any set of millions of events get analyzed statistically. Now, with the extra knowledge about 3D, I can improve those, but that is not the question here. Schrodinger's and Heisenberg's concept that the universe is statistical has a viable alternative, Planck's constant with my 3D magnetic duopole's improvement. So, I present that the cat existence and non-existence is just a measurement issue and a time issue. The universe is not a probability. Both Heisenberg and Schrodinger are incorrect in that postulate even if their statistical mechanics math works for many physics challenges. Particles exist continuously. Space is 3D, time is linear. All continuous. Particle have continuous fields and forces, from A, electrostatic, B, direct nucleostatic magnetics, strong nuclear, and C, axial nucleostatic magnetics, weak nuclear, as in my magnetic duopoly particle rotate in ways that are less than observable. That is continuous, but only when the observed exchange from up to down is measurement possible. So, the universe is quantized. Particle years are like dog years, and that is the better analogy than Schrodinger's cat.